guys, welcome to New Movie Thing Show. I'm Meg Turney. And I'm Trisha Hershberger. And this is the show where we review movies that are in theaters and tell you what we think about them. So if you can't make it to the theater this weekend, you can always go to netflix.com slash sourcefed to get a free month of instant streaming. Free! Fun! So this week, we got the pleasure of watching Les Miserables. Oh, it's so good. It was so good. On my own. Two, four, six, so one. I sounded just like Hugh Jackman. Just saying. Nailed it. So, quickie review. I'm a huge Les Mis fan. I've seen the stage play multiple times. I absolutely loved it. There's a couple critiques that I have that a lot of people had, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Uh, quickie review. I have never seen the stage play. I, had, I was sort of familiar with the music. I was kind of a fan of the music, but I've never seen the stage play. So I didn't have a lot to compare it to. I love this film. Go see it. But if you're going to see one thing this weekend, Django Unchained, we'll get to it later. So this movie is a story about Jean Valjean, who's a total bamf. Um, and how he kind of goes from being a bad guy and a hate-filled guy to a really awesome guy and uh, what's right and what's wrong and it's a war movie and it's a musical for dudes because it's about two dudes. Really. The film was directed by Tom Hooper, who also did King's Speech. Which was amazing. I was actually really surprised by um, some of the Hollywood actors that really pulled that off. Anne Hathaway stole the fucking Anne show. Anne Hathaway. Off the charts. I love you. I hope you win amazing. every award you're nominated for for this part. You were awesome. She was fantastic. Amanda Seyfried really got me. I could. I did not expect her. I did not expect Karen from Mean Girls to come and bring it. Hugh Jackman, amazing. Hugh Jackman, off the charts. He, well, he's super good on Broadway. Uh, he has a, a Amazing list of credits. We love him and he killed it. And uh, Russell Crowe, who did I'm not, sorry that you did this movie, Russell Crowe. Did not kill it. I don't think his singing was horrible or his acting was horrible. He was just kind of meh. Now it's time for love it and hate it. I'm building a barricade around oh. your heart. It's going to triumph over that barricade. <laughs> oh. My love it about this film is hands down the soundtrack. Um, it's amazing. And the actors that really pulled through and surprised me, Anne Hathaway, I didn't, I didn't know what to think of her being uh, Fontaine going into it, and I thought she was awesome. And my hate it would have to be just a couple little things. I, I wasn't crazy about some of the adjustments they made as far as leaving things out and rushing through other parts. I wasn't crazy about Amanda Seyfried's vibrato in her voice. And I also wasn't so crazy about Marius's frog voice, although the empty chairs solo, he killed. He didn't do frog voice at all and it was amazing. And I cried and I cried a lot. My love it would have to be, um, I absolutely loved how well done the sets were, oh, the, just yeah. the small details. Um, <laughs> and the young actors they chose for this film, oh. um, the young Cosette was amazing. Um, my hate it would have to be, um, I didn't like Samantha Barks as Eponine because Aww. I've seen Leia Salong do it and, on YouTube. Uh, I've heard Leia Salong sing the same songs and she kills, she takes Samantha Barks and she breaks her over her knee and then she stomps on her face. She's I, so much better. Same with Eddie Redmayne. I thought his singing was good, but he does this weird thing where he shakes his face when he's singing and it took me right out of the movie. It just, it looked like he was having a small seizure. I like the face singing. shaking because he was so Passionate, yeah, just shake his face. Every single time he did a no. Uh, I just say one other thing that I didn't care for was the way they handled multiple pe people singing at the same time. They would cut really fast between the people, and it was hard to get a grasp of what you were even looking at. So, wrapping it up, final thoughts go see this movie. It is long, but it is good. So, I'm going to give it four to five. For my final thoughts, I thought it was incredible. I mean, I, I like to go to the movies to feel, to step outside myself, and this definitely, like like I said, I was crying like the whole time. I thought, why don't soldiers sing more? So for me, I'm also going to give this movie a 4 out of 5. I loved it. I'm going to buy it and own it and repeat watch it. The only reason I'm giving it a 4 and not a 5 is because of those small things. Javert wasn't where he should be. They're not the only ones who love this film. It has an 8.2 right now on IMDb out of 10. And there were lots of people that didn't love this film. Rotten Tomatoes gave it, the critics overall was a 7. 71%. Mm -hmm. Audience was an 86% though. You know who didn't like this film? Lisa Schwartzbaum of Entertainment Weekly who said, This faux opulent Les Mis may be long for the guillotines. Did it, Lisa? LA Times, on the other hand, really liked it. They gave it a 4 out of 5. It said, Despite its pitfalls, this movie musical is a clutch player that delivers an emotional wallop when it counts. You can walk into the theater as an agnostic, but you may just leave singing with the choir. Well, that's it for New Movie Thing Show. If you can't make it to the cinema this weekend, you can go to Netflix.com slash SourceFed to get a free month of instant streaming, and then you can join us on Movie Club where we review movies that are on Netflix. And I'm pretty sure there's musicals on Netflix right now, too, so hey -o. I'm Meg Turney. I'm Trisha Hershberger. We'll see you guys next week. I dream I'm be singing all day. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? <laughs>